Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsanza Vool, and in this video we're going to be making a range of boat hull styles. So this was a quest brought to me by Ryan over on the Patreon, and it was a really really cool idea for a tutorial, because it covers a couple of different workflows, and also there's a specific ordering here that I find makes this easier, and it just comes with a little bit of trial and error to find what works with you. Now as always with Blender, this isn't the only way of doing it, you could do this in several different ways, so it's entirely up to you how you'd go about making this boat hull, but also during this I discovered some, or was told, some interesting things that to be perfectly honest, I just didn't know about boats, and it was quite interesting to find those out. We'll talk about those as we come to it, but to begin with, I'm just going to model this basic boat shape. So the first thing to realise here is that starting in a subdivision surface workflow probably isn't the right thing to begin with. You can actually model this fairly easily in the generic shape without it, and you can recognise what you're doing. Now if this is going to rely more heavily on the subdivision surface shaping, then I'd probably do that relatively early to begin with. But there's no point because it's going to slow down the computer slightly when you don't need to. If you want to see a workflow focusing on that, there's a video in the description where I go through making a alien elf hollow fin. So you're more than welcome to have a look at that. Now for what we're going to do later, we need to come in and add some edge loops in here. It's also going to help define the shape. So this is something to think about to begin with because eventually this is going to become the planking of our hull. So however many planks you want, you need to have this many cuts. So I'm going to left click here to confirm I want to do it at that point. So I just scrolled up to get the amount of edges that I wanted, left click there and this gives you the option of moving them up and down, I don't want that, I want it directly in the centre so I just right click, that's right click not left click or you can press escape to get that in the centre. Now at this point we can start dealing with an axis at a time so I'm going to come into my Y view, go into vertex mode and I'm going to select these at the bottom to create this curved shape. Now because we're going to be doing the same thing on each side I want to put in a mirror modifier so I can either do that with Alt X and then I can click on this side if you've got hard ops or you could come into your modifiers and just put this in manually that's entirely up to you. Now with hard ops this is creating an empty which is really nice because it means you can fiddle around with things later if you need to but this isn't going to be relevant for me so I'm going to just hide that. Then I'm going to go into vertex mode, x-ray mode, select the bottom one and we're going to move this in and we're going to be using our proportional editing. Now this gives you a lot of options and it depends how you want your hull to look. So for example I could G and then X and you can see what this is doing is this is moving everything in and I can move this up or down and it gives this quite nice curved shape. So all you need to do is scroll up and down on your mouse wheel to change how much this affects. So I'm going to go with there, maybe one more or less, yeah let's go with that and then click and then we can see that our mirror modifier is dealing with that quite nicely and then I'm just going to come into front view and we're going to deal with the front shape so I'm going to select those and then I'm going to G and then this time Y to keep it in the Y axis but this isn't going to look right for this we'll have a look at Y so G and Y and whatever I do here it looks a little weird not quite the shape you'd expect of a boat or at least I don't in my head so you could keep it like this if you want what I'm going to do instead is change this to sharp, which basically does the same thing, but in the opposite direction. And that's going to give a nice curve. So depends how sort of sharp or pointed you want this. So I'm going to go with there. And then in fact, actually, I'm going to select all of those and G and Y that forward a little bit. So somewhere about there. And I don't want this perfectly flat. So I'm going to select those bottom ones, change this to linear, which is now going to do this as a line. And then G and then Y and move that and we've got a bit of a better shape. So at this point we're looking good in a couple of axes but it's looking off here. So let's just sort that out. So we're going to vertex mode and we need to move these in now. Now to do this we need to control an R and add in some edge loops here. Not too many because we're going to be adding a subdivision surface later just enough to get the approximate shape. Left click, right click and we've got those there. So what I'm going to do is select there to there so the ones that are furthest out, let's change that back to sharp and then G and then X and then we'll move those into somewhere around there. Now don't worry that this bit isn't perfect, we're going to deal with that in a second. Um, for example that one's obviously off so let's unselect that one, let's press O to turn the proportional editing off, G and then we can X that out and then we're getting something that's looking a little bit more uniform and I can start bringing again these ones in so O and then G and then X again and that's looking a lot better okay and at this point there's going to be a little bit of tweaking so at this point I'm going to just select all of those ones on the edge and then I'm just going to use machine tools now I'm doing this without add-ons mostly but machine tools is free so go and get it and we're going to use the align feature to alternate and then 
move those over so they're all equidistant and then we've got a pretty good looking object here in terms of our basic hull shape now this will need smoothing out but that will happen as part of the subdivision surface that we're going to do later now just some tweaking you'll notice there's a slight not perfect straightness to some of these and that is because we've got these vertices here so what we can do is if instead of having this problem we can actually just delete this entirety of this side so we'll delete those vertices and then all we need to do is alt select the edges of our vessel and then e and then x and bring those together and we've got a better shape so pretty happy with that at this point we've got our boat hull now we just need to deal with a couple of minor bits. So first thing, so I wanna have this sort of center line be more exaggerated. So what I'm gonna do is go into face mode, select each of those faces here, and then I'm actually gonna make this a separate object so it's not affected by what we're gonna do later. So I'm gonna shift and D to make a duplicate, escape so it's in the same place, P and separate by selection. And now we've got this object here and we've got our object in the middle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to apply the mirror modifier and then go into face mode A, and then all I'm gonna do is either use hard op, so Q, alt and E on macro, or we can come in here and go into extrude along normals, and we can do that. So entirely up to you which one you want to use. There are reasons why one is better than the other in certain situations, but in this it's not gonna to make too much of a difference. The only thing we're gonna to need to do is select these vertices, and then that top one there, and then alt A, to get those aligned and I might just select those let's turn that off and then G and Y that's slightly forward to make it nice and smooth my apologies for not knowing the name of this I'm sure it's got a nautical term but hopefully someone in the comments can tell me what the name of this ridge is now at this point we're going to move on to the bit where well I got this wrong when I was first doing this and talking through it with Ryan my lack of boat knowledge was quite apparent and then I got nicely educated on some of the differences between boat hulls. So from what I can tell or what I've been sent, there seems to be two major designs of boat hull. And this is to do with the way the planks either overlap or don't overlap. And there are different positives and negatives of each, but we're gonna have a look at how to make both these clinker constructions or carvel constructions. So we'll do this twice and have a look at how we can do both of these just starting from this basic shape. So what I'm gonna to need to do is apply this modifier, make sure your merge is clicked on, otherwise when you apply this, if I click this off, otherwise when I click apply all, and go into vertex mode, you'll see that these are separate bits and that's not what you want. Whereas if we click merge and then apply this, they are now connected as one bit. So we've got that there and all I'm gonna do is select both of these and then shift and D and then Z and move that up and we'll do our different types of construction that we can start both in the same way. So let's start with the Carvel construction first because it's probably the simplest one to do. Now what we're gonna need to do is make sure that we've got this marked out clearly or preferably clearly before we start doing our subdivision surface. So what I'm gonna do is just isolate this part of the hull, go into edge mode and then I'm just gonna alt select each of these edges so it goes all the way around and what I want to do is I want to make a line between each of these that I can then use for the paneling now this is going to be slightly exaggerated this should be really small but if we're 3d printing this and we want it to be recognizable we need to add a little bit of depth to this we can also do this for some of these cross beams as well if we want I'm just going to select let's say that one and that one and then all we're going to do is press ctrl and b to bevel them and make a small bevel if you've got too many just scroll down until you've got a one segment bevel and you can make this as wide as you want it to be now at this point we're going to use the same thing again of extrude long normals and we're just going to click that and we're just going to drag that in slightly however much you want so entirely up to you where you go for this i'm going to go that far so Again, pretty exaggerated, but you can see this works perfectly fine on those vertical sections as well, and it gives a nice clear gap. Maybe that is a little bit too much on the bevel. Let's do that a little bit less so it's a little bit more subtle. The other thing you can do is instead of using that, you can press Q and then Alt E and Macro on hard ops, and then we can put that in a little bit as well. So we've got that there. Now, if we then come in and add our subdivision surface modifier, this is going to look, well, crap like look at it it's horrible 
So we don't want to do that. Well, we can do that. You can do this at any stage, but I like to do it before I add the subdivision surface so everything's clear. All I'm going to do is go into edge mode and then I'm going to click off so nothing's selected. Select, select sharp edges, and this will select all of our edges that we want to be, well, sharp and not have this subdivision surface on it. And it's got all of the ones that we want. It's always worth having a check. Sometimes there's a slight angle difference. You can come here and change the sharpness. So for example, you could change this up to 60 or down to 10, depending on what you want to be selected. Edge, and then either edge crease, or you can press Shift and E, or you can press N, and where it comes to item and says mean crease, you can always just shift that up to one, and that's gonna turn this purple. So I've got this set up so I can see it really clearly as a different color to other things, which we'll come to deal with in a second. And then all we're gonna do is add modifier, subdivision surface, or you can just press Control and whatever you want it to be on your numbers. So I'm gonna press Control and two, and you can see we've got this clear planking, we can always turn that up if you want to. So go as high as you want. And you can see this works really nicely to give the illusion of those different planks. And this possibly looks even nicer if I come to shadow. There we go. That sort of really gives a nice clear idea of this hull shape. Now I'm actually gonna turn shadow off just cause it slows down performance a little bit. So that is our cavil construction. Now at this point we do have a well thickness to this and we probably want this cut out. So what I'm actually gonna do is shift and D and then Z, bring that up and Let's just get this sorted. So I'm just going to isolate this, do exactly the same thing again. So edge mode, select, select sharp edges where now we've only got these ones. Put our mean crease up to one. Control and let's say three, I think I did for the other one to get this nice rounded shape. And then just make sure that everything is looking about right. So let's G and Y those in a bit. So we've got some thickness there. And then we just need to fiddle around with those. So let's proportional editing again, G and Y and those. So we've got some thickness there. And then we're just going to S and then X and just bring that in slightly there. However thick you want this to be, this is obviously a bit more exaggerated. Click, shift, click, control and minus, And then we've got our boat. Now, if you really wanted to, you could do the same thing on the inside. I think that's probably a little bit overkill to put the panel lining in there. So you could have done that before if you wanted to as well. I think that's a bit more than I need in my life. So let's have a look at our clinker construction. And this is gonna be dealt with in a slightly different way. So what I'm gonna do is just go into face mode and I'm gonna delete all of these top faces. Let's just select that that way so it's quicker. And then let's delete and delete these faces. So we've got our boat shape but it's infinitely thin on our edges then we're going to need to divide this up into our planks so let's go into vertex mode or edge mode actually and then alt click and then shift and alt click each of these segments or each of these edge loops and then i'm going to instead of using the mean crease i'm going to go to edge and then mark sharp and that's going to turn it yellow for me just because I've got this set up to be yellow when it's sharp and purple when it's got a crease. Just makes it easier to see the difference. And then all I need to do is add modifier and I want to add in an edge split. So what this is going to do is break it into different sections. And what we don't want it to do, and it's automatically set up this way, is to do it at a 30 degree angle. Otherwise, we're going to have lots of problems on the actual edges. So let's get rid of that. And now it's only going to do it on the sharp edges, which are the ones that we've marked in yellow. So once you've got that good to go, apply that and turn off proportional editing is separate. So you can see they're separate things there. Now, we actually want these to probably be separate objects just so that we can bring everything together a little bit more nicely at the end. So what I'm gonna do is press P, separate by loose parts. And now we've got this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit. And all we need to do is select that one, go into edge mode, Alt select the bottom edge and I'm just going to S and then slightly scale that out. Now we might need to scale this slightly more on certain axes. So I'm just gonna S and X and bring that out slightly more. And you can see that we're getting this nice overlapping shape. So just do that to the rest. We'll see how I'm speeding this up. And then we've got our nice sort of edge look to it. Now, if you want to, what you might need to do 
is select all of these and then G and then Z them down slightly as well. So there's gonna be some overlap for when you do your 3D printing and you don't have any issues with it being a non-manifold object. Then the final thing that we need to deal with if we want this to have our smooth shape from our subdivision is that we're gonna to need to crease all of our sharp edges. So select, select sharp edges. Oh, that seems to be being a pain on the top and the bottom. So we'll select those as well. And then shift and E and then we'll just move our crease along. You could have done that in the way that we did earlier. So again, just do that to each of these. Then at this point, we can just come here and add in our subdivision surface. Let's put that up to three and we get our nice organic smooth shape. And then we need to add some thickness to this. Add a modifier and we want a solidify modifier and you can put this as thick as you want it to be. So let's go to, I don't know, 0.25. And then I'm going to put even fill. You can see it looks a little bit ugly there. If I click even fill, it's going to give a bit of a better shape. Then all I want to do is copy these modifiers to these other panels. So I'm going to shift select all of the other panels and then shift select the one with the modifiers we want last and then control and C and then we can copy modifiers. If you don't have this copy attributes, go to edit preferences and then type in copy and you need to click this copy attributes menu, which is part of Blender, but it just comes turned off. So control and C, copy modifiers, and then that puts the same modifiers on each of these with exactly the same settings. So just speeds up your life a little bit, not having to do that individually. So there we've got our two different boat hull types, depending on what you want and what construction type you want it to be. Exactly the same initial method of modeling, but then just some variations to give you the end appearance that you want. If you found that useful, please do hit the like button so that YouTube will show it to more people that also might be wanting something similar. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And if you want this file or you just want to support the channel further, head on over to the Patreon where you get these videos a week ahead, ad free, and you can also get cool things like these files. Have a great day, guys.